Hey everybody, this is Rustin Rose with Metalholic Magazine and Mojo Radio, and with us today from the shores of Valhalla, her Imperial Highness of Shred, the Commander-in-Chief. How are you? I'm doing fine. How is everything going over there? Wonderful. I, I want to talk to you about your new EP, Evolution, in a moment, but first I want to give the listeners and readers a little history on your humble beginnings. I know you hail from Norway, but you've lived as well in Italy, here in America, and now in England. You're pretty well-traveled and worldly for someone your age. You also speak four languages, I'm told. And, of course, in the seven short years you've been playing guitar, you've become a seven-string virtuoso. And then there's your incredible voice. How did you come to be so accomplished and worldly in such a short time? Um, <laughs> well, that's a uh, good question. Well, I mean, I guess that uh, I was uh, moving around quite a lot when I was a kid. Um, as far as um, my guitar playing and singing is concerned, I started out uh, playing guitar because I wanted to be a songwriter. And uh, I was just totally obsessed with playing guitar. I just wanted to become a really good guitarist and write really kick-ass music. So I was uh, really just, you know, obsessed with it, playing and playing and playing and playing. And as far as uh, singing is concerned, you know, I started singing because I wanted to sing my own music since I wrote it. Um, and then, you know, a year after I started singing, which is like 2009, then I became really, you know, like, wow, you know, I should really work on this because I figured out I had this uh, four-octave vocal range. Um, and I thought it would be, you know, a shame not to take lessons and learn how to use it properly. So I started taking daily singing lessons, you know, work really hard on my vocals as well. Just out of curiosity, I'm assuming Italian and Norwegian to go along with English, but what are or is the other language you speak besides guitar, of course? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I speak French. French, okay. <laughs> Now, was there a song or an album or a concert that you experienced that was sort of a catalyst or the epiphany that led you into music? Well, music has always been really important to me, and I've always been a big, you know, music fan ever since I was a little kid, to be honest. I've been, like, you know, um, going through people's, you know, CD collections, you know, and just uh, trying to... Um, find, you know, as much uh, cool and interesting music as possible, and, uh, but me, personally, you know, I was always, you know, doing art, and then at a certain point, I realized that, you know, music was the thing, because when I was drawing and stuff, you know, I would always be listening to music, it was always music, 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 um, so I was kind of like, you know what, I want to play an instrument, and that's how the whole thing started. Last year, you released a stunning interpretation of Black Sabbath's Paranoid to great reviews, how did you come to choose that particular track out of all the songs you could have chosen to reinterpret, if you will? Well, basically, you know, I was looking at all these uh, different songs, and uh, I, I kind of wrote this uh, list, you know, of songs that I would kind of like to cover. And then it was like, you know, let's just um, try to, you know, play around with Paranoid and see what happens. And uh, it turned out great, so my manager really liked it. And we were kind of like, you know, let's record that one. Let's record, you know, my version of Paranoid, and that's what we did. And then this week, of course, your EP, Evolution, hits digital outlets. Sort of a fusion, at least to me, it's sort of a fusion of traditional and power metal with some progressive and even punk and pop elements mixed in. And the songs are well-crafted and the guitar work is stunningly impressive. You have to be pretty pleased with the outcome. Yeah, I am very happy with how everything sounds like. I'm very happy with uh, this time, you know, when uh, this is like the first official release and I've been doing some demos before. And uh, this was the first time when I kind of went into the studio and I was like, I couldn't wait to do the vocals. I was really, you know, uh, looking forward to uh, record those. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm really happy with how everything came out. I think there's a lot of attitude in the vocals. Um, there was no autotune or anything on the vocals. It was just organic, you know. And um, I'm happy with the guitar solos because I feel that now there is um, there was feel in them. You know, it was not just speed. It was a lot of feel and melody in them as well. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm happy with the songs, happy with how they're produced. You know, I think it sounds cool. Yeah, well, being commander-in-chief, you must be something of a control freak and a perfectionist. Um, how do you, when you hear the songs over and over and you play them all over and over again, how do you know when to step away and say enough is enough? I never do. <laughs> That's why that's why I kind of have to like you know take a break from it you know what I mean because uh, um, I think that uh, when I was uh, recording these songs you know it was uh, Sterling's um, job you know to kind of tell me that you know what 
that's enough. You know, it had too much happening in this song. So it was a great choice of producer because I'm really kind of over creative. I have 10,000 ideas. And if you listen to a song like Evolution, I wanted to put like dive bombs on top of the tapping intro that was going on. And it's like Sterling just kind of turns around and look at me and kind of go, dude, are you going to ruin this thing? So um, he was really, he was definitely like putting his foot down and saying, you know what, this is enough. This song has enough going for it. Um, so, you know, I also had, I had a lot of more like, you know, vocal arrangements and, and he was kind of saying, well, you know, the song should be growing. It shouldn't just be like 10,000 things going on straight away. So, um, you know, Sterling is a really cool guy to work with. And I think, uh, um, creativity wise and arrangement wise speaking, you know, it was his job to kind of be like, that's enough. You know, we have what we need. <laughs> Well, and that was a perfect segue because you worked with uh, Sterling. Um, for those, I think everybody knows who Sterling Winfield is of Pantera and Hell Yeah fame. How did you initially connect with him? Because you did the Paranoid remix, and then, of course, you did the EP with him. How did you guys initially connect? Um, well, basically what happened was that um, I did this demo thing in 2010 and uh, my manager, she sent him a link and then he called us. Um, so I didn't I didn't know anything about that until I just heard him on um, on the phone, you know, on speakerphone with uh, Elizabeth. And he was uh, talking about how he really wanted to be part of this and, uh, and work on this because he thought it was really cool and different. Um, so I just kind of asked her, I was like, who is this guy on the phone with this Texas accent? You know, who are you talking to? And she's kind of like, well, it's, you know, it's the Pantera producer. So he really wants to work with you and I was like really well that's cool because I didn't know that you know he worked with unsigned artists so I was really excited about that um, so that's really what happened you know I didn't uh, um, I, I wasn't aware of that you know she had sent him the demo or whatever thing until we then met in December you know and he was like you know he dig it and he came with the statement that he came with so that's how it happened the wonderful thing about technology it's not like the old days so <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah you know but uh, yeah I mean it has uh, you know taking some time but you know she um she found his contact information and sent him the link and he opened it up and dated it so that's cool well you've got a lot of people who are really supportive of what you're doing which is a great thing I'm yes people are supportive and that makes me really happy you know because I'm, I'm really passionate about this and really serious about it um so then of course you know it makes me happy when uh when people like it and when people embrace it absolutely now i know you have a wealth of material you've penned already you know some 40 to 60 songs i'm told why did you choose these particular tracks for your Evolution debut? Um, well, as far as, you know, the choice of songs, you know, I mean, I, I write the music. And um, as far as, you know, which songs should be recorded, I mean, I really wanted to record Evolution, but that was a song that uh, Sterling really wanted to record because he thought he was like, oh, you have to have that one on because it was, uh, that really showcased that I'm a metal guitarist, you know, definitely. Um, and uh, Elizabeth was really pushing for us to record Let It Go because she really digged that song. Um, so it was, you know, I always kind of listen to uh, what uh, the producer or what um, Elizabeth has to say because, you know, I'm, I'm so close to, I mean, I am the source basically for these things. Um, so, um, I write all this music, and then I uh, I kind of ask them, you know, which songs do you think should be on this thing? Now, Evolution, is this just a tease or a prelude? Can we expect the full-length album out sometime later this year, or...? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I hope so. Like, we went in, we were um, always planning on kind of, you know, recording a debut album in two separate sessions, you know, and we started out then in December because we wanted to have something out real quick. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I have uh, loads of songs, you know, and I definitely hope that I'll have, you know, a, a debut album out, you know, as soon as possible. But, you know, we'll see. Definitely when this year is over, I want to be able to say that, hey, I had my album out in 2012. <laughs> Well, let's talk about your baby for a moment. You already have your own signature prototype guitar. How did that come about? Well, basically, I ever since I started playing uh, seven-string um, guitars, you know, I constantly been going for Ibanez because I think that you know their um, their their guitars are really good. And when you shred, you know, it's nice to have a neck that's not too thick. And a lot of times when these uh, guitar brands make seven-string or eight-string guitars, you know, the neck is like a tree trunk, basically. Um, so the Ibanez guitar is just, you know, perfect, you know, as a perfect shred machine for anybody who plays seven or eight-string, you know. Um, so um, I don't know. I mean, last year I went over to the um, Music Messe, you know, down in Frankfurt, um, and I went over to their stand, you know, went over to the Ibanez um, place. And uh, the guy that was there, the Ibanez representative, he already knew that I was playing the RG7620 and he was really pushing for me to try out this prototype um, guitar that they had because they were promoting a new series, you know, a new guitar um, series. 
Um, so he was like, yeah, you should try this green guitar. He's the, he was the only one they had, who was a, which was a seven string. And I played the guitar. They saw me play. You know, they were in touch with my manager, and then I got that guitar. And then I got my guitar endorsement, and I was really stoked about it because I um, I never had a lot of gear, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm endorsed by you know my favorite guitar company, and I have a unique guitar. So that was definitely like um, amazing, and I was really happy about it. You studied with some amazing guitar talents, Steve Smythe, and of course your true mentor, Ramon Ortiz. How has he impacted your playing? Because I know you said he really elevated your lead guitar playing. Yes. Um, Ramon Ortiz was uh, introduced to me by um, a producer that uh, my manager is a good friend of called Herman Viacorta. He had worked on his band Uncla that you know, he had produced their records. Um, so he was the one who introduced me to Ramon in L.A. And um, L.A., I mean, no, Ramon is definitely the best uh, guitar teacher you know, that I ever taken lessons with because he's the kind of a person that he's going to show you um, licks, not just scales. And a lot of times when you try to take lessons with somebody, they're going to play this really awesome guitar lick and you're going to ask them, how did you do that? And they're just going to give you the scale. And he's like, dude, how is that going to help you? He's not going to help you at all. So um, he is a really cool teacher because he really kind of shows you these things. He writes it down, you know, and he takes things out of his personal guitar um, library, you know, vocabulary when it comes to the things that he uses in his playing. And he shows that, you know what I mean, to his students. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's definitely been very um, a source of inspiration. Um, and he offered, you know, to be my second guitarist, you know, when I was in L.A., um, because he really likes the music and he's excited about it. So um, no, I mean he's a he's a really cool guy. He's a seven string guitarist. He knows how to play, but he's not afraid. You know, when it comes to sharing, you know, his secrets and encouraging his students to do new things, to go new ways. And um, a lot of times, you know, people are conservative, very conservative. But um, and then you know, I took some lessons with Steve Smith before I went in the studio, and you know, he's the same way. You know, he's really cool. He writes down these exercises and shows things that you know he plays, that he does. You know, he also shows you know his licks and stuff. So um, that's two very unique guitar teachers right there, because most teachers they do not do that stuff. It's now over the course of your lifetime, women in hard rock and metal have become more prevalent, but mostly as vocalists. In many ways, you're sort of breaking through that glass ceiling for young female guitarists. The list of female shredders is pretty slim. Why do you think that is? Well, I think it is because it's such... Um, I don't know. I mean, when you, when you think about um, songwriting and when you think about um, women playing instruments, you know, actually I was thinking about this the other day, even when it comes to pop music and country music, you know, even when it comes to genres where you have a lot of, you know, chicks singing and that get a lot of attention and are selling loads of records, it's still hard to find, you know, uh, females who write music and who um, are instrumentalists, you know what I mean? So I don't think it is that strange when you think about how, like, you know, testosterone metal is, you know, I mean, it's definitely a guy thing and you got all these guys listening to it, you know, and obviously who want to play in bands and stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't ever think there's going to be a huge revolution with all these chicks coming out and all of a sudden shredding, but, you know, it's, it's, there are always going to be some people doing it. Are there any women in metal and hard rock that impress you? Uh, I'm a big fan of Angela Gosto, or I, I used to be anyway, um, but um, if I say that, you know, people are going to be surprised because my vocals are really clean, so, right. and, um, so I don't know, I mean, I think these, you know, death metal bands, you know, with female vocalists are kind of cool, you know, I don't listen to symphonic um, metal or any of that stuff, but, you know, I, I like these extreme metal singers, you know, that are, you know, you think it's a guy, and then it's like, what, is that a chick, you know, um, so yeah, I think that's kind of cool, definitely. Nice. For the unsatiated masses out there, tell us something about yourself that might surprise people. And in the few moments between sleep and your music, what are you into or passionate about outside of music? Oh! <laughs> hmm. I like mystery, man. Let's keep people wondering. But we'll keep the mystery, then. Give us five essential albums in your record collection. Ooh, wow, that's cool. Okay, well, first of all, definitely the Randy Rhodes tribute album. How can you not have that one? People have to have it. And if you are a guitar player, obviously, you have to worship Randy Rhodes 24-7. Um, another album which has nothing to do with uh, the heavy metal genre, but that I think people should own, is uh, Surrealistic Pillow by Jefferson Airplane, because the songwriting is amazing. Um, I think that uh, Innuendo by Queen is a total masterpiece, and you have to have that one. Um, and uh, let me think. Oh, yeah. And, of course, 
some extreme metal. I think that uh, my favorite um, extreme metal album to ever come out of my home country is uh, Been There with you. Because it's totally unique and it's something that no none of the, you know, church burning metal bands, you know, were doing. So I, I definitely love that one. Um, and uh, woo, let me think. <laughs> Last one. People need to get my EP, man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yes, Evolution is evolution essential. EP. All right. The Commander-in-Chief, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. It's wonderful getting to know you, and hopefully we'll have plenty more conversations as things get bigger and broader. Well, that's awesome, Will. Thank you very much for the interview. That makes me happy. Thank you.